Hi, my name is Ian Kerr, and I'm a member of the percussion faculty here at the University of Oregon. In this video, I'm going to be performing the timpani and snare drum audition repertoire for the All Northwest Band. I'll also be giving a couple of tips and pointers uh, that will hopefully help you prepare these excerpts along your way for the audition. Good luck. So for some tips for the rudimental style snare drum etude. The first one is that you want to make sure that all the rolls are performed as double stroke rolls and not closed rolls like you will have in the, uh, the classical snare drum etude. So also you'll notice with that that every time there's a roll printed that there's a number next to that. So in the second measure you see two rolls on beats three and beat four um, that both have a five underneath. That means that that's a five stroke roll and you can refer to the PAS uh, 26 rudiments to see exactly what that means, but a short, uh, quick explanation is just that if you see five, five stroke roll, that you're going to have five notes that compose that roll. Uh, and that includes the release note. So in beat three, you will have one, two, three, four, five, and then beat four, same thing, one, two, three, four, five. So that's right, right, left, left, right. Um, and that's just making sure that you're playing exactly five notes there and they're doubles. The next measure, you have a nine stroke roll beginning on the downbeat. So that means you're gonna have four double strokes and then a release. So you'll have in the first beat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the next downbeat. So that's what that'll be. Or if it's faster, you'll have, okay? So you have the nine stroke roll and then the downbeat. So make sure you do that. Um, the next one is accents. Accents in the, Rudimental style snare drum solos um, are, to me, only 15% louder than the dynamics that they are printed around. So um, if you look at line two, measures four, five, and six, you have piano, and then you have a sequence of 16th notes with different accents uh, within those. So I would sit there and play everything at piano and then have the accents be just that 10, 15% more, um, as opposed to, you know, 50% more, something like that. So just a little bit, but always within that dynamic. When you have accents within forte, make sure that those accents are heard within the forte dynamic. Um, so 10, 15% more than that forte dynamic. Uh, and that brings me to dynamics themselves. Make sure that you know we're really, really taking advantage of a wide dynamic range. Because in a snare drum etude, we don't have melody per se, right? So in that way, we need to make sure that we take advantage of all the musical elements that we do have, and one of them is dynamic, so let's make sure we perform a great variety of um, dynamics and a big range of dynamics. So that means at the very beginning, you do want to start reasonably strong with forte, as it is the loudest dynamic in this piece. And then we have piano, all the way down to piano, and so that means that the piano is the softest dynamic, and let's really make sure that that's quite soft so that we show off a, a large diversity of uh, dynamic control. So that would be another big, big tip. Um, after that, um, just a, a, a little bit of a, a quirk within dynamics, something I find myself having to worry about at the ending, is making sure that you're pacing yourself um, uh, from this, from measure, thir or measure 12, we have forte, next measure is mezzo forte, 14 is mezzo piano, and then after that we have piano. So make sure that we don't get too soft too quickly in those four measures, um, as I found myself doing when I first was, was performing this piece. Um, one last little thing I'll tell you about is one of the more difficult uh, rhythms to play given the grace notes around it. So if we look at measure 10, beat 3, and then again in measure 15, beat 4, we have a rhythm that is just like 3 E and in the case of measure 10, but it has grace notes on the first beat and then it has a flam on the and count. So Pick your sticking carefully with this. Um, there's really kind of two ways to do it. The first one is to just do the rhythm right, left, right. Something like that. And then the next one is to do right, right, left. Like a quasi-flam tap. 
Um, whichever one is easier for you is the one you should choose. I personally picked number one, um, but it has a little bit of more difficult considerations with your left hand getting the flam back up. Uh, as with anything in, in music, practice very, very slowly and work it up from there. Get it correct slow first and then get your, your speed up slowly from there. This time we're talking about the orchestral style snare drum solo uh, and in this one in the same way as the rudimental style uh, snare drum solo but the opposite we need to make sure that we are performing the rolls as closed rolls otherwise known as buzz rolls right so all the rolls should sound like this as opposed to the double stroke rolls that we had in the rudimental style solo so that's the first thing all of the rolls in this etude are buzz rolls closed rolls Second thing is the four-stroke rough. Uh, we have this right off the bat in this piece, and not only is it a four-stroke rough, but it's also a piano. So this creates a lot of challenges. And one thing I think that can really help people is to think about different stickings. If you saw this, you would normally approach this with a sticking left, right, left, right, something like this that is singled. And that can work a lot of times, especially if it's a louder dynamic, but because it's so soft, um, I will propose a different sticking that I think will help very much, and it is the sticking of right, left, left for the grace notes, and then a right hand for the principal note. So it would look something like this. I'll do it very slowly first. So right, left, left, right, and then played at the um, appropriate speed. It would sound like this. The reason this is really nice is because the double left that you do gives your right hand enough time to get back up. For the principal note. So I think that's a great way to play four stroke roughs and that's going to be something that will translate into anything you play. Um, it, in fact, it's the same sticking I used for the last note of the piece which is loud also. I think it gives a little bit of a swifter um, uh, sound for the three grace notes and I think it works, I just think it works better. So that's one thing. So give that a try. Uh, the next thing is something I spoke about in the rudimental etude if you listen to that and it's accents and dynamics. So in this piece, same thing, accents to me are only about 15% more um, sound than you would get on a non-accented note, and it always has to do with the, um, the dynamic that it's printed around. So 15-ish percent more sound than the dynamic that's printed. Okay, and then also dynamic contrast in orchestral playing is one of the most important attributes. So we're really, really going to want to maximize our softs, especially. Um, I think... Some of the um, best performance of this, performances of this will probably be from people who play very, very, um, you know, soft, but also with clarity. So as soft as you can control this opening is the way I think you're going to want to go. And then by the time we get to sforzandos and the fortes, you want to display a dynamic range that shows us that you can play quite loud as well and within control. Okay, and then after that, I wanted to bring your attention to one of the technical challenges in this piece, and that's measure eight. If we look at measure eight, we have um, sort of a hemiola happening, and then every second note of that, of that um, rhythm, these two note kind of increments have a flam on them. Okay, and so um, the sticking that I use here is actually left, right, left, right, left, right, um, perpetually, and that means that the grace note is also gonna be on the left, so if I do that slowly, it'll look like this. Okay, and we're crescendoing as well. This is nice because you can bounce the left from the first note into the grace note and then play the other principal note with the right. So it ends up looking like this. Okay, the trick is to make sure that that sort of quasi double that you're doing in the left hand, that the second of those is much lower because that has to be the grace note. So in real time, it would look like this. Okay, so that's gonna help you, uh, I hope, with this etude. Um, and good luck with your auditions.
talk about the first etude, the fast symphony etude. The first thing I want to mention is beating spots. Let's make sure we have great beating areas on our timpani. Uh, and for me, that is if you take the center and the edge, if you go about a quarter of the way from the edge of the drum to the center, that's going to give us the best sound right about here. If we go too far to the center, it starts sounding a little bit tubby and not too much tone. And if we go too close to the edge, we hear too much uh, of the rim, we hear too much of a high partial sound and not the beautiful tone we get from the, the proper beating area. So make sure you're hitting in the good spots of the drums. The next one is dampening. We have to dampen a lot in this etude, and there's two reasons we dampen. One of them is the rests, obviously. Where it says rest, we should dampen. Um, let's make sure we dampen exactly when the rest happens, as if it was an own, its own attack, right? So make sure the dampen is very, very rhythmic. Um, don't dampen too early, don't dampen too late. Uh, the next reason is because of dynamic changes. This may not be as obvious. So from measure two to measure three, we go from forte to piano. We're going to want to throw in a dampening in there right before we play that, that, that downbeat on, on measure three so that we hear it very clearly and it's quite articulate. If we don't do that, it may become um, in the wash of the previous sound. So if you're able to get a dampen in there before measure three, I recommend doing that. The technique for dampening, while holding the stick still, you flare our back three fingers out and you place them right on the drum. And I recommend placing them on the drum in the beating spot because as the, the best beating spot gets the most resonance out of the drum, same thing but the opposite happens when you dampen the best beating spot. You'll get the most resonance to go away, which is what we want. Um, one other thing I would like to talk about is the forte piano roll in measure 14. For this, Make sure you hit the downbeat forte, of course, and it's coming from a, a crescendo. And then right away, we don't, we don't need to roll right away because there's going to be a lot of resonance happening um, from our forte downbeat. And then we can wait just a split second before we start rolling uh, at, at the piano dynamic because the drum will be naturally coming down to piano from that, that first hit on the downbeat. So that's just a little, a little kind of a, a, a trick. And then the last thing I wanted to say is make sure that you're thinking of the tempo in this etude because you've been working so hard to get all the correct drums with the right beating spots that are all in tune. You've got your muffling figured out and then you listen to yourself play and it's not in good time. So make sure that throughout the process of working on this that you're always thinking about playing in excellent tempo and that's one of the most important things on your mind as you figure out all the other things. Let's talk about the slow timpani etude, the one at the bottom of the page. Um, first of all, I want to say that, uh, in my opinion, you should use a stool, uh, as, as I do. Um, the reason is, is because you have so many um, tuning changes in this passage that it's going to stabilize your body and help you do that because you many times have to tune while you're playing, or at least get your foot ready to tune while you're playing. 
The other thing that it does is it affords you um, some stability. You know where your body is, uh, is going to be at at all times. So you can be tuning here, play a note, and your body is kind of centralized based on the fact that you're sitting on the stool. So I think that's very useful. Let's make sure we're using a reasonably soft stick for this etude because there are so many rolls. You want to use a stick that has um, enough you know, soft German felt on the outside that it obscures the strokes you're using to create the role that you're playing. So obviously you want it to be as sustained sound as you possibly can. So soft sticks. This etude is all about your tuning uh, because there are a lot of tuning changes. Also about sounding as beautiful as you can, in my opinion. So um, along with sounding beautiful, the, the tuning is so important. So make sure that you can hear the pitches in your mind as if you were playing them on the piano or something. So even you can practice this even when you're away from the timpani. So I would practice getting those the, 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 the pitches in your mind and making sure you can replicate them away from the drums. It's always going to be a valuable thing. It's going to help you assess yourself while you play, while you play as well. Excuse me. Um, so there's that. Um, you need to use the gauges a little bit in this, in this etude because you are tuning your drum while playing. So there is a bit of that, so make sure you set your gauges if your, drum, uh, if your drums have them um, right before you play so that they'll be as accurate as possible because you can set your gauges, go away for a little while and come back and they won't be as accurate as, as when you first set them. So, so do that. I also want to talk about roll speed. There are so many rolls in this piece. And a roll is basically our attempt at sustain, right, as percussionists. And so we need to consider a couple things. The first one is the range of the note that we're playing. So if we're in the low register of the timpani, we can roll pretty slow. Slower than you might imagine. And if you're in the high register of the timpani, you might need to roll a little, a little faster. That doesn't really um, happen in this etude, but just for your information. Also, the dynamic contrast has something to do with whether you're going to roll quicker or slower. So for example, in measure nine, when we have these swells from meso forte up, you can actually speed your roll up just a little bit to facilitate that faster or that um, that louder dynamic. Um, so that's another another way we can vary our roll speed. So take that into account and listen to your roll speed and sit and ask yourself if it's giving you the most sustained sound. Uh, the last thing I wanted to go over was uh, measure seventeen into eighteen, uh, and then the subsequent two measures as well. 19 into 20, you have to roll on the B natural and then immediately hit an A on the same drum. So that's going to involve some pedaling while we play. So we need to do two things. We need to make sure our pedal moves quickly and also the second thing is that it moves accurately to that A. And that's easier said than done. Um, so make sure that your pedal is moving quickly and goes right to that A as opposed to moving very slowly. We don't want to hear the glissando. So here's an example of what, what it would sound like if we could hear the glissando. This is what we don't want. And we move very slowly to that A and we hear that glissando. And here's an example of something that's more like what we would want. Where we move to that A very quickly and we really only hear that that A and then the B, we don't hear what's in between. Uh, one last little tip on that is, in my experience, most people move their foot too soon. So try listening to yourself and making sure that you're moving your pedal a little, a little later than you thought you should, almost right when your stick comes down to strike that, um, that A on the next downbeat. Um, do all those things, and I think you will be ready to play this etude really well. Good luck.